So, um, the poncho that we're, I'm going to focus on today is an asymmetrical poncho. It's one of my favorites. It's easy to make, and I like the way it wears. So I need a couple models here. Anybody want to model one? I, I love She's a good model. model. <laughs> and the bone fold. So it's going to go like this. There we go. There you go. Okay, now we'll have a cold in this one. You can wear this one. Tomorrow. Style. It's a cool thing about I get to do. This one. These two are made of lint. Ooh. Yeah, no. I still have an interview. You didn't hear it. <coughs> really cute on Trying to make my voice last. So, this is linen, lace white linen. Lace -white. And I'll talk a little bit about linen. And, you know, a little bit on how it's uh, how it knits up. It's it's really interesting on how linen knits up, and then you wash it, and your product looks totally different after you get it washed. But um, is that the same? Thing? <coughs> when I was I'm having allergies, I always have allergies when I come out here in the springtime. So um, I'll try to try to clear my throat when I can. This this one. Um, when I made it, my husband said, oh, well, it's light. And I said, yeah. And I said, it's light, it's linen. And I said, you know, think of us going to Little Italy, sitting out on your patio, having, having dinner. And he goes, you're going to eat spaghetti. Maybe not. <laughs> yeah, so, and, and that's smart I mean, man. This. this one's the alpaca. This one's a lot warmer than those. I got a lot of Got a model? Okay, this one's alpaca. So if you get too warm, you can take it off. Now that's a lace alpaca? It's a lace weight alpaca. Okay. If you like, I was going to say, if you really like alpaca, Webbs has an alpaca and silk on cones. Mm -hmm. And okay. it knits up beautifully on our machines. Is it a lace weight? Yeah, it's like a 214. Okay. So that's that's how that one goes. So these are the patches I'm going to focus on. I have a couple others I'll show you. I'm going to focus on how this one's made. So in any of the patches that I've made, I've, they're done with tubes. You're going to knit a tube, and the way I like to do it is I'm going to knit a tube, and before I take it off the machine. I'm going to drop the left and right half mark on each side. So one stitch on either side of the right hash mark at 3 o'clock, one stitch on either side at the 9 o'clock. On purpose. You're dropping on purpose. stitch. <laughs> on purpose. I'm good at that. And I'm going, to let, purpose I'm going to let that run. <laughs> now, you know when you drop a stitch how it like runs down before you can catch it? We're going to unravel it on purpose, but sometimes with the wool, you have to really work it. It doesn't unravel as easily as you think it would. So before you start your poncho, you're going to make a, a gauge because you want to know how long you're going to knit your tube. So for that poncho, you're measuring from here to here and, you know, doubling it. Say that again. Shoulder. Opposite shoulder from okay. mm -hmm. Opposite shoulder from there to there, and then double it. And I like I like it to go to the wrist. That one's a little bit longer, but I like it to go to the wrist. So double it. So if it's twenty four, then it's forty inches. Yeah, yeah. And um, I think for me it was like thirty two inches doubled, and I did sixty two total. 
So you're going to knit up a couple swatches. you got to do that. I usually do two swatches of about 50 rows because then I can experiment with dropping the stitches, kind of look at how I want to lace them together and get it with the, the two. Usually on a comb, you have enough to do a couple swatches of 50 rows each. So that gives you enough to, to work on. So when you're knitting your two, you've done your gauge, you know how many rows. I think on the last one I did was the white. On that one, um, that was uh, 625 rows. So it is a lot of crazy. So this is where you drop it. This, here. Well, I, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you that, but um, that's where it's laced together. Yeah. So when you knit the two, it's just a two. Just keep knitting. Before you put on, uh, you put on your waist yarn. You knit one row. All these are in the directions. You knit one row, and then drop of your waist yarn. After you've got your length, knit one row, then you drop two stitches on either side of the three o'clock and nine o'clock position. On the last stitch. You've already done a row of waist yarn, so I take those little bars that are left because I unraveled that first row of waist yarn, put it up on the needles so that you get, you can see it better on this, you're going to knit solid all the way up then. From where I dropped the stitches. Here's where the stitches were dropped. Get it close by now. And then. Mm -hmm. You see it? Mm -hmm. Where I dropped it, but then I picked up the bar from the waist yarn. Mm -hmm. So now I've got solid. Okay. Um, it just kind of helps it keep, it keep it together rather than having the bars across there after. Okay, so that's how the tubes are done. Then you have to unravel those stitches. And I wanted to have a, a retired teacher, so we're going to have a little contest here. <laughs> <laughs> and I need three volunteers for that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Anybody else want to volunteer? Okay, come on. Come on up here, Veronica. <laughs> are we on the table or at our seat? You can do it at your seat. Okay. Cool. Okay. What's the trick? Can you find can you find where I dropped the stitches? Yeah. Oh. Do you see where they, I dropped the stitches? Mm-hmm. There? Mm hmm Okay, and what you're gonna do, you're gonna take it and pull on it and start unraveling. All the way down? All the way down and stop when you get to the waist yarn. We'll see who gets there first. <laughs> That's the contest. When it's when you're working with the wool, we have two. See who gets to the bottom first. Take it and take it and pull on it. Now, if it gets if it gets stuck there, you can use like a. You can use a. Oh, okay, let's say. 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 Let's
I hope I, I, I go too fast. So it 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 us. It gets, uh, you're going to have to give up recess. Somebody wants a close-up of the scene. See if this is where it's... I think she said... It's very clear. Here's the linen. Oh, wait a minute. So Who tell did me, the, that's the linen, and this is, this is what? You did this one? You only did one stitch. One stitch. Oh, I still have a chance, guys. Still? Oh, you're still. Oh, yeah. You only did one stitch. Wow. Huh. See, I've done these on the Andy, but I haven't done it on the fine. Gauge. It's very, very it similar to some of the techniques people use with the Addy or the five bed machines. That's with Okay. All right. I kind of set you up for a I know. Um, I deserved it. Yes. <laughs> you only did one stitch, too. Oh dear. But usually what I do with this is I'm going to, if it gets caught, you know, I'll use it okay. to get it going again. Because the wool kind of sticks to itself. And it's got the bar. See, this almost looks like it wanted to give up three. Okay, we're going to pick this one. Right here, and then it wants to do this. Maybe a third Oh, and then you do two for each side. You press the flat first. Okay, so uh, we'll get back to the. Wow, that's. I don't press them. Not want to give it up. So we'll work on it. Yeah, we can work on it. We're going to pass this one around. Yeah. <laughs> and you can see that we have <clears throat> bars on either side. And the reason that I drop two stitches, you can leave stitches out of work. That's another way of doing it. And I'll show you examples of that. Least, uh, but you need to leave at least four out of work in order to get, and, and when I only leave two out of, or when I drop two, I get more to work with. Then even if I leave four out of work, or take four needles out, <laughs> that's, that's, I like that, I like having that extra to work with. It also helps because the stitches don't close up when we join them together, and we'll talk about that. All right, so what I did, we can pass those around, and the, the linen one, when the linen comes around, feel that. It feels like straw. Um, but it doesn't after you wash it. Okay. <laughs> now I think I have. So, what is this? I've already done kind of like staging here. So, what I do is a lot, most of the things that I make have three panels. So, I'm going to line up the three panels um, parallel to each other and make sure that they're facing the same way they were knit. So, because, and you can tell when you look at it. Because if it's going in one direction, you know, I can see the stitches going up the side. If I have it switched, you're going to see half a stitch. So I want them all going in the same direction because I like to latch two from the bottom. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I have them going in the same direction. And I also turn them so that I've left a long tail. To begin with, that's in your instructions. I leave a long tail to sew up the ends. So I have that on, the, and you'll, those of you that were trying to unravel, notice that there was a coiled up piece of yarn in there, and that's what I'm gonna finish it with. So I like those all to be um, on the same side, so that when I finish, I'm going to use this, go there here, stop, and stop. So, so I have them all going in the same direction. And you can see on these, you can tell the, which direction to go because they're, um, you'll have that half stitch if you turn it around and you've got a whole stitch. So, um, does that make sense? Yeah. 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 Okay. So, once I've done that, I'm going to take my latch tool 
And <clears throat> I've experimented, I've used this before, so I know on this one, I think your instructions say to do two stitches from each side. This one I know looks better if I do three. So you experiment with your gate, you know, the gauge swatches that you're going to do. See what you like. You like two stitches, you want it more lacy, you do two. If you like it a little bit tighter, you would pull up three. So what I'm going to do here is take the other thing that I like to do. All right, this one. Got to undo this all the way. Okay. The other thing that I like to do is um, I'm going to take three from this side, and I'm going to now pick it up because we're all going in the same direction. Three from this side and pull it through. I'm going to go back to this side and pick up. Sometimes in the beginning, you're, you're dealing with your waist yarn and your end. Italy. It's such yeah. a pretty joint. I also like to unravel before the yarn gets a memory so that the when you unravel it, you're not going to have the you cakes. Like a oh, I see. Mm -hmm. in between each, then the, the loops are just sitting easy, easier to see, and they're like yeah. firm, so you can pick up and pick up and pick up that way. I'm I'm not sure. If, I, you, if you put some a pen or a, a fat marker or a cut off broomstick or something like that in each two, so it's hanging. Yeah, you can you could experiment. I I experimented once with pool noodles yeah. <laughs> to see if that would work, but it was. I, I got, I'm so used to doing it this way, but sure. it, for some people it would be. But you take this and you stretch it across. You can see the strands really easily. And did, I'm sorry, did you say you'd like to let it, you want to do it right away or you don't? I like to do it right away because then the yarn hasn't created a memory of those two stitches that I dropped. Okay. So I'm going back and I'm um, back and forth on these. And take a look at your work every so often because sometimes you'll take two from one side if you, know, if you get interrupted and it sticks out like a sore thumb. Um, so take a look after you get a cup, you know, like five inches done because it, it's so heartbreaking to have to undo the whole tube and start over if you notice that you did it at the very beginning. So I'm going back and forth with this, picking up three. Picking up three from this one. Picking up three from this one. Yeah, it's set. <clears throat> I knew on this one, even though it says two, I knew on this one that it looks better with three. So that's why I did three. So that's when you do your when you do your swatches, you're gonna just, you're gonna say, hey, I like the three better. Okay. And um, it's all personal preference. So when you do your swatches, you're actually putting them together. Though. I do. I you do. I drop the stitches. Like I put them that. together because then before that, I can determine what I want to. You know, I can determine ahead of time what I'm going to do when I'm done. Lovely. Thank mm -hmm. you. Because. The other thing with linen is I'll wash those swatches because I want to see what they look like when I'm done. And because that linen shrinks and it gets so much softer. So I, I put the whole poncho together and then wash it. And, and when I'm done with it, I look at it and I go, oh, I don't know about this. I really don't you know about this. You have to say this. a little novena first before you put <clears throat> yeah, it in that's the it. Yeah. Mary. I put it in the washer and I put it in the dryer. And when it, because it comes out of the washer kind of stuff, I put it in the dryer with the fabric softener sheet and let it go. And then when I take it out, I go, oh, it's nice. This is what I want. <laughs> this is exactly what I want. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> and that's why you know, it happens with the linen. Um, so, Getting back to this, I would latch two of these all together. I would latch two of this one all together, and then I'm left with the ends. And on the poncho, um, let me borrow one. Of, if somebody can throw one of those ponchos up here so I could show you. 
Is that flat netting, that one, or is that a tubes? They're all tubes. Oh. And the whole reason I like to do this with lace yarn is when I'm knitting this stuff, I can see through it. Is that here? I mean, I can actually see through it. Right. And, but it drapes so nicely. <clears throat> and so when I'm done with this, after I've latched to everything together, of course, that all came apart now. Then I'm left with the ends. Mm -hmm. So you, on this poncho, you have a bottom end that goes all the way around, and then you have the neck end that only gets latched to up to where you want the neck opening, mm -hmm. which is about usually about 15 inches or 14 inches. Then I just go around this way and finish here. So on the bottom end, what you're doing is you're taking and it could be three stitches it could be two stitches it all depends on when you take a look at it your sample swatch take a look at it see whether you like to latch up three stitches i think on the white linen poncho i didn't like i thought three was too much two was too little so i did three two three uh -huh. two three two to kind of compensate for for that i it, but on the this this poncho was totally different. Uh, what, what was the white one? What's the material? Of the white that's one? linen. And then the white wool. This one's linen, and that alpaca. one's alpaca. Oh. So when I do the the edge stitch, would be the bottom row. That's going to be one straight latch up, and all I do is take three. I'm going to do three, and pull it through three. And pull it through three and pull it through three and pull it through and go all the way up the side that takes the that takes the um the um edge and actually folds it so you get that nice edge yeah oh wow can i see them sure that's fabulous can the ponchos get passed around Sure, yeah. Why don't we why don't we do that? So how how do you finish it at the very very you just sew? It's just dang okay. Just three loop it up the side. Oh I just it didn't seem like a tube, it seems it so is it's a tube, but when you're doing it, don't be afraid that you can you know you can actually see you can see daylight through these. They're they're very very thin, but they drape so much nicer than if you use sock yarn. That's why I use lace weight or um, or even you know lighter lighter yet. If I can see through it, I'm happy. So, um, can I have that back just to finish talking about it, and then we can pass them all around. So that's what you're going to do on your bottom edge. You're going to go around, and you're going to latch tool it up. When I get the, you know, this is going all the way around. Pull this up. Going all the way around this edge. Latch tool, okay. and then I'll put a, a pin. Or I have those, you know, little clippy things, mm -hmm. and clip it. And then, what you can do, or what I've done, to when I did the edge, I did kind of like a crochet, mm -hmm. like a crochet across the edge to finish it off. And then I kind of loop it together to make it look like mm -hmm. it's one continuous braid across the bottom. That's how I did that. When you do the neck edge, the neck edge, you. You're going to latch tool up to where you want your the two together, mm -hmm. to where your neck edge is going to be. Then stop and do the, this part just like you did the bottom edge, and then you finish here. And then I use some extra thread to kind of reinforce this because it's kind of a stress point. Yeah. Reinforce it, and then you're done. It's beautiful. How do you reinforce it again? Just with some extra um, yarn. Okay. Because you're going to have a loop, and I want to tie that loop down. And then maybe loop it to the other side and we'll go back and forth just a little bit to, to make sure that that stress point won't pull. And that's 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 how you do it. You don't have waist turn at the ends of the tubes? You do. Okay. Um 
Oh, you know, I skipped a whole section. Oh, so okay. let's talk about like, that. Hold on. Yeah. Let's talk. Yeah. That was the waste yard. I'm not so. wearing it with the waste yard. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? A designer. Yeah. Yeah. So, take, take the yeah. complaint yeah. pass so. right next to Angela. <laughs> Thank you. So, Fill it up. Nice. We got ourselves up to the point where all of our <coughs> tubes were joined together. And then I do the one bottom edge. And you end up with, you're going to have to finish off the edges. So that's what this, this sample was for that. So um, you, there's a number of ways you can do it. You can do a back stitch bind off. I like to take them off on double points and do a three needle bind off. <coughs> You can take your latch tool, and whatever way you want to finish them off. You can just sew it if you want to. If you're going to put a, a decorative stitch across the bottom, you can sew it whatever way you want to. But you're going to take it off, you're going to do this with each one. Mm -hmm. Then you do your, you can, I did the edge on this one. So if you can picture this as a tiny poncho, this is the bottom edge. And then this edge would be partial neck. <coughs> so that's how that's oh, done. Wow. But I have I, in the handout I have step by step instructions mm -hmm. on how that's done. You can kitchener it too. I think. Um, I made an NYPD flag doing the same thing. Okay. Um, with the stripes, you know, the American mm -hmm. flag, and then I put the blue stripes in, and I did I did the same join. So that's yeah. uh, that's a really nice join. I like that. So that, that's how that's done, and then when you're done, I'm, I'm sorry, I skipped the part about actually do all well, the Well, I'm going to wear mine with the waist drawn on it. You <laughs> wear it. <laughs> Why'd you ask that question? So this would be, would be ready. This is like a, like a mini poncho. So I would kitchener, or I mean, I would kitchener or do a three needle bind off. Then I pick up the yarn from the inside of this one, bind this one off, pick up the yarn from this one, bind this one off. And then with the extra yarn that you have after you've done the bind off, you can kind of, at the bottom, there would be a little bit of a gap and you can kind of close that up the way, you know, where they come together. Where they come together. Mm -hmm. And then bind off, bind off, bind off, bind off. And then you just latch tool that one side up, leave the neck opening, go around. And you're done. It really is a pretty fast process. It's really pretty well, for you, I'm sure. It might be a little longer for me, but we've got this kid. Are there measurements in there? Um, you have to measure for yourself. Oh, okay. And it, it talks about how to do that. You're going to measure from here to for that patch of from here to here in double. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, sorry. No, from here to here in double. So, in talking about, does everybody understand the process of how it's put together? I went right to the end instead of talking about binding it off, which you're going to bind off the edges together. So you can, um, I have some samples here of ones that I've done. This one was Kitchener at the bottom, and then um, I did a Three needle bind off at the top. This one I dropped two stitches and did a three uh, strand latch up. This one I did the same thing. I did a Kitchener at the bottom, did a three needle bind off at the top. This one was four stitches out of work. So you, I just did that so you could see the difference. Um, there's one is much tighter than the other. So and when you do the four needles, you pull those out of work before you do your tube, um, you have to be real careful that you're not closing up the gap as you're latching mm -hmm. them together. Yeah. That's why I like to drop the tube. We can pass those around. <laughs> Same thing with these two samples. Oh, um, four stitches out of work <laughs> and a two strand braid. This one was two drop stitches and a two strand. Well, you can pass that around. Mm -hmm. Can you use one strand this or you can do two together in the mm -hmm. machine? One, one strand one in the laser. Yeah. Wow. 
So this yeah, is you, you can see it. You can see through. Oh, the heft right. of it is gorgeous. I mean, it just the, the, the drape feel. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. And then it drapes so much nicer when you use the lace away. Oh, for sure. Now I know what to do with zillions of colors of that than I had it on. So, <laughs> so <laughs> what lace? Is, what grade is that? This is uh, two twenty. It's lace. No, it's even less than two twenty-four. Uh, this is the um, the linen, and this is the white linen. But it feels like straw when you're, you're doing it. Mm -hmm. And um, with the linen, I did a lot more of um, oil because I think it absorbs the oil a lot. You know, it just did better when the machine was well oiled. Oh, okay. And then um, I put it together. I washed it, and it came out of the dryer like like wow. I mean, I'm, it's just a major transformation. This one, just we can. This one's the alpaca. Um, this, around. this is black linen that I haven't got a chance to use. Um, this is a merino wool. And I'll show you a poncho made with that. That's merino wool. And um, so that's the my favorite poncho, the asymmetrical one where you, you have the down the arm and then you kind of wrap on your shoulder. This is a, and I gave you illustrations of ponchos. <coughs> If you could imagine it in flat pieces, you could make it right. mm -hmm. whatever way. And if you're unsure about how long you want it and everything, try uh, ripping up a sheet and using that as your guide <laughs> as to how long you want something and whether that's going to fit right. You can right. always make it a little long and, and take it up to well, where you want it. If it really, you know. That um, alpaca poncho that's going around, that, that arm is kind of longer, but you know, it's, it's just... <coughs> like it's yeah. shoving up on your sleeve. This one's um, angry poncho. Oh, nice. So, let's pick up the pen. That's really nice. And then this one, and it's kind of neat when you use different colors. I love the colors. This one's one of the um, Mobius. It's a twist front. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, um, somebody gave me a ton of this yarn, so all of this is this. This is a merino wool that was real light lace weight, so you can, I can see through it. But it's uh, if anybody wants to try this one, very nice. Yeah, would you style that on somebody? Yeah, and style this on somebody. I need a volunteer. Come on, Kathy. <laughs> I will. Come on up here. Oh, come on up here. <clears throat> And these I kitchenered the, the panels together so that it, it had. So, how much yarn do you use on one piece? For, for most of these, it was less than uh, 300 grams. Really? For the whole thing. But it's lace weight. It's lace weight. So it's one cone, one large, large cone, is that um, miles of yard? The alpaca yeah. one took one, one cone, of and the, the cone oh, was 300 grams. So. Where did you find your, this yard? Okay. The, <clears throat> this, this linen is a company in Lithuania called, um, and I'll pass it around. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's twisted again. And and it's a the alpaca is in the There's a label inside that that goes with that. And then the labels in the, inside this. This one is merino wool, but it's a little bit thin. I don't know that I do. I do something small with this because it's, it's a lot thinner. A lot more. Vita Networks. <clears throat> Any questions about this? Anybody need to see, if you want to see the close-up of doing the yes. braiding? Um, Did you see the or the dryer gave you that? The dryer. That's really beautiful. This is straight out of, and that one, the white one, straight out of the dryer. But I did do um, my swatches. I did um, braid them together and I washed them first. Okay. Then I knew how much the whole thing was going to shrink up. Mm -hmm. And um, 
it's it's surprising that it does shrink up that much. When you did your swatches, did you finish the the top edge and like did you finish them all the way around? You just, no, I just um, kind of. Secure the, the waste, waste yarn. yarn. You left the waste yarn on it. I did. I just all I wanted to see was how much it was going to shrink, and then what what it was going to look like when I did so my unit Does it matter? Is your waste yarn the same kind of yarn? I mean, not necessarily. Or? I I have a personal preference of using real um, like This is a real cheap two twenty four acrylic yarn. I, I, use it I swear I have. That's exactly the way. I mean, it looks like exactly the waist yarn that I have. I was just wondering. But I, I use it for everything. I use it on my socks and everything. So um, it is very lightweight. But it's not necessary. It's just my preference on the kind of waist yarn that I use. I, I buy them. You know, I see my yeah. eBay and I buy them in big, huge cones. And I'll have it for three or four years. Is that what you get? Oh, so uh, the lace weight um, is mostly Etsy. So the linen, she's on Etsy. That alpaca is on Etsy. And yeah, all of this came from Etsy. Um, and then, but this, the, and the twist front poncho, um, that was just one that somebody gave me. Mm -hmm. And it was lace weight. And it was it was yarn that was um, it was meant to do a, a vest where you did this variegating. If you had five strands together on like a oh, gray needle, and then you would drop one color and start another. So all of this all, of this, all came from somebody. Um, so I'm going to make that. Now. Somebody gave it to me, and I thought, oh, I'm not making. <laughs> so I, I made that. This, that's really this, beautiful. This is just, I put out there so that you can see the different colors. Did, did you need to do a lot of blocking or did it just come out of the dryer? Well, <coughs> so, yeah, the, the linen I did not know. This came out of the dryer that um, way. For uh, the twist front poncho, and um, I, I put this out so you can see how much fun it is to combine colors. Um, this is just a one gift. Um, when this, this block, I did block this. But when I block stuff, I just wash it. And I put it in my washing machine on spin. And just let spin all the water out and then lay it flat. And this, this is the same yarn as this. Wow. Blocked. So, you know, you get it's just that's the way it comes out. And this is from the same kit. So, this is the same blue as this is the same blue as this. Wow. Mm -hmm. Looks like my so tension is a little bit professional. tighter on this one. And there is a also when you're joining your tubes, there is a right and wrong side to you're gonna, it's more prominent on one side. The braid is. You can see. There you can barely see it. So you, that's why you have to really lay them out and figure out. I'm going to do this one and I'm going to do this one because you want to. You want your braids on the same side. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah. Yes. Um, on this one, you can see. You can barely see the braid, but on the other side. It's more from very so that's why you want all your braiding to be done from the same side. When when you make the twist scarf, is there a measurement that you have for the twist scarf so you don't make it too big? You mean the poncho, the yes. twist poncho? The twist poncho. That um, I think when I did that one, I took some. I, I don't have a measurement for it because I, I don't remember, but I took some cloth and twisted it. And kind of pinned it together, and this is how much I'm going to need if I'm going to twist it in the front. So that's how that kind of personalized. Yeah. It, it, well, if, if you're that, that's a really foolproof way of doing it. Well, and then if you can allow difference from the dryer shrinkage. Yeah. Proportionately. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I always like to kind of wash the swatches just so that I don't have any surprises. I I, I did that with the alpaca um, because I wasn't sure how much it would. Right. 
but I don't, I don't put that in the dryer. The linen goes in the dryer, but that one, I just wasn't sure how it was going to wash up and if it was going to bloom. I had never worked with it before, so I wasn't sure how it was going to come out. If you have to make one of these on a different cylinder, does mm -hmm. it just compute then that you'd have more panels or fewer panels? Or exactly. Okay. And on the the um, asymmetric or the asymmetrical punch off, really the the length isn't as important as as this is. So you could do three panels. Um, I have in here. <coughs> this oh. is. Oh. 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 <laughs> You win. <laughs> you win the oh, oh, This was done, I think, on um, That's gorgeous. every other week because I really wanted it to be lightweight. And this is just another <clears throat> people who saw this saw this last year. This was a, a sweater I took apart because I like the yarn. Mm -hmm. And I bought it in a secondhand store. And I unraveled the sweater and um, and I did this every other needle, I think, on my 72. Um, just to get something really, really light, and um, same process, um, latching them together, and then somewhere there's a, a kitchen area. Are there three there? There's three, but they're real narrow. Mm -hmm. So if you were doing something on, say, you don't have, a, I use the 84 because I'd like to get that width, um, then I'm only doing three. Things of 700 rows rather than <laughs> rather than four. So I do. I like using the 84, um, but you can use any cylinder. And I think you know. I did say that in any it's cylinder, if you want to drop the two, um, and you know, the two stitches on either side, you can do that, or you can take four needles out of work. Just if you do four needles out of work, you know you're going to get a smaller braid, um, and it's more apt to kind of close in on you as you're working. So you have to be careful of that. That's mm -hmm. that's the only difference. But my preference is always to drop the two stitches. Mm -hmm. so, the, so the more needles on a cylinder, so say like a bumblebee with a 92 or something like that. Yeah, bumblebee. Be better to drop or go every other stitch. You think it's that way Well, it, it all depends on, you know, it really all depends on what you, you know, what you're trying, look you're trying to get. And the reason that I went with the larger cylinder is because I wanted to use lace weight and I wanted it to drape. You know, I wanted it to, to wear, I, you don't want to wear anything heavy. The first poncho I ever made, I did with leftover soft yarn. And it was heavy. It was really heavy. Um, and I think probably in that there might have been like um, at least 700 grams of yarn. And it was heavy, and it was it was hot. It was heavy, and I, I knew I wasn't ever going to wear it. And I ended up selling it in a consignment store. Um, uh, she put it in the window and put a high price tag on it, and it sold within a week. So I, you know, but it wasn't for me. And I wanted something that would really drape well. Um, and this, I love the linen. You know, for summer, it's just just really special. I don't know if I would eat spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's when you flip it to the back, you know. Yeah. So, anyway, you're more than welcome to come up and take a closer look at these. Take a look at the uh, ponchos. Anybody have any other questions? Yeah, I have a comment. If you want drapeability, this is bamboo. Yeah. It's, 